Hello world, this is Craig. In this video we're going to assemble this SBC85 CPU board. This is version 1.1, so these are the ones I just got in the mail yesterday. And first thing I'm doing is I am checking the, the changes that I made to make sure that I didn't mess anything up, and I can already see that I did. If I look at the barrel connector inlet, on the first board I had these just as large round circles like this because that is the way that they rendered properly on the the JLC PCB website. But on this version I changed these to aw brown, so you know rectangle with round ends to better match the barrel connector. You know, this is the barrel connector, so it better matched those those pins. It rendered properly on the website, the Gerber viewer on the PCB way, but it didn't render properly on the JLC PCB website, which is where I submitted these, and that didn't surprise me that much because their Gerber renderer isn't nearly as good as some of the others, and I thought, well, maybe in the production it'll wind up being okay, but it didn't. It rendered it, it or it built it exactly the way that it was rendering on the website, so I'm going to have to change these back to round circles or submit the board to a different house in order to get these aw browns uh, the way that I intended. So I can see already what I'm going to have to do is nip these off on the barrel connector, then just face solder them on the pad, and then I'm going to make sure I fill that hole back up with solder so that I get uh, a good through connection for my current to get to the other side, which was the intent of some of these. So I can see already I got a problem there. That one jumped out at me. Uh, the DB9 is correct. The pin 1 is down here, which is where it should have been. Uh, and my spacing between the barrel connector and this DB9 is fine. There are some other changes that I made that I had forgotten about. I moved a couple of the other pull-up or pull-down resistors for the key lines, like the interrupts and the, the read and write and so forth. I moved all those to the back on surface mount, and hopefully I didn't mess any of those up. I changed to a much lower profile reset switch, and that fits in the uh, hole properly, so that's going to be okay. So I'm populating the board. For me, it's all about keeping the board as flat so I can do it on the bench as long as possible. And the problem is if I populate the sockets first, you know, in the old days when I would get, you know, sockets from one manufacturer and they were all the same height, it was easy to populate all the sockets and still keep this side of the board flat so I could flip it over and work on the back side. Unfortunately, you know, after a, a few decades, I've run out of all of the sockets that I have, you know, bought years ago. And so now I'm just kind of getting, as I need them, whatever I find available. So different manufacturers. So if I were to populate the sockets on the front, the problem is I would have sockets of different height and the board would rock. Uh, when I was working on the back. So what I'm going to do on this board is populate the little surface mounts on the back, and I think that'll be okay because they're fairly well spread around. So they'll make a, you know, a nice little foot. I guess there isn't anything over on this side, but uh, it should make a good enough foot that it, it won't rock. And having that little space on the back side will hold it up so that when I'm populating the front side, the pins will go all the way through and not, and the socket will go all the way in. So I think what I'm going to do first is is uh, solder the half dozen surface mounts on the back. So in doing that, I could use paste and then use my little hot air gun to uh, uh, melt the solder and, and solder those, but unfortunately I'd have to declutter my bench here if I wanted to get that out and put it on the bench. So what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, solder these by hand. In soldering these, I'm not going to use change to an ultra fine tip or anything. All I'm going to do is put a little solder down on one of the pads, and I'm using my fine solder here. This is uh, like 0.015 millimeter. The other solder that I use is is one millimeter for general components. Once I have a little solder down on one pad, I bring my component over. Let me rotate this so I can grab a hold of it better. And I don't want this thing to tombstone on me, so I'm going to hold it the whole time. I'm just going to set it down on that little pad of solder, remelt it on that one side. I'll do that for all of them, and then I'll come back and 
solder the other side and then I'll come back and touch up the solder on the first side. So let me go ahead and put all those down. Okay, I'm happy enough the way all of the surface mounts on the back turned out. The board is still nice and flat so I can work on the front side without it rocking on me. The last time I built this, I uh, did it you know, bit by bit and brought it up using the minimum number of components that I could. This time I'm just going to build the whole thing at one time. And so the next thing I'm going to do is populate all the sockets. So Make sure all my pins are straight in the socket. Make sure I know which is pin one. I'm going to go ahead and put all the sockets in. All right, all the sockets look good. What I'm going to do now is flip the board over and then tack the sockets on two pins and then check them. So let me flip it over. And I'm going to tack two opposite pins, then check to make sure that each socket is fully seated down into the touching the board. Okay, all the sockets are tacked. Now, if you flip it over, I can see that some of them are up a little bit simply because they were a different height. So they're all flat on the top, but they were different heights, so some of them aren't touching the board. So now what I do is I put my finger on each one of them, and then I remelt the solder and bring it so that it's tight. And sometimes you'll hear a little snap, and sometimes it'll you'll just feel it move up a bit, and sometimes it won't do anything. So that one had a nice little snap in it. And sometimes I got my finger on the wrong socket. Okay, I like the way the sockets look. They're all down, touching their little feet. They're all oriented, so pin one is in the right direction, a little notch. So now I'm just going to go through and solder all the pins. I make sure I get comfortable first. Clean my tip off. Okay, here we go. So I soldered them and then I went through and I touched them all up, make sure that uh, they're all shiny, there's no stress on it, and they have all got enough solder and they're wetted properly. Okay, so those all look good. Oh, now, how did I miss that socket right there? Okay, now I gotta come back and put that socket in. Okay, now I think I've got them all in. Now I'm gonna come through and put in all the low-lying guys, the little uh, resistors, i put those in next. Okay, from this point forward, as I start putting things in, uh, the board's going to get harder to stabilize just sitting on the bench, so I'm going to have to start using my vise and uh, to hold it where I like it. So let me go ahead and put in the 
rest of the components, the crystal, the little jumpers, uh, the test points, stuff like that. Okay, so I think I had all my chips here. Let me plug my wall word in and check voltages. Ground is ground and that is 5.1. Just as a sanity check. All right, now I'm gonna unplug it, plug in my cheapest chips first, the ones I got the most of. Okay, I got my two little food tasters in, so let's Okay, no surprises there. Let's put in some of the pricier chips. Put the power to it, see how it likes them apples. Okay, light turns on, that's good. Nobody's hot, that's good. Okay, and power in. Well, I'm just going to jump to the answer. Let me get my code that has the base EEPROM that just has a jump to 1000, and then my program that I've been working on today. Just let me just see if proof's in the pudding. Let me just see if it works. All right, so I use TerraTerm for my terminal emulator and set up serial port COM3. That's the correct port. I think, yeah, I've only got the one serial port port on this and I'm using a USB to serial adapter on that. Uh, speed baud is 2400, 8 bit, no parity, one stop, no flow control. So that's all correct for this program. I'm going to up the baud rate on the confidence test later, but right now I have it at 2400 baud. Power up. Okay, SBC85 confidence test. Well, that's phenomenal. It uh, made it this far. Let me do a couple of RAM checks to just check RAM because if I've got both RAM working okay, if I can talk to the 8155, so the 8155 is an 8. If it can do this RAM check, then the 8155 is probably working okay, and that's only got 256 bytes, so it doesn't take that long to go through. It's almost there, FF. So it looks like it tested the 8155 okay. Let me check the 6264. Looks like it's checking that one okay. All right. Well, I know it jumped there, but I can go ahead and dump the memory at zero to see what's there. There should just be the, the jump instruction. Yeah, so there's the C30010 jump instruction. 
and I know that the expansion zip is working okay because that's where this confidence test is. Well, that's very good. Uh, everything powered up. I've got some base tests here that look like they're working okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run these longer and make sure that everything seems okay on this board. All right, well, that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching, and I think the total build time for this was an hour and a half or so maybe to get everything uh, built, so it's not a tremendous project to build one of these little SBC85 boards. Okay, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Talk with you later. Bye-bye.